Hey, I'm Dr. Sean Steen. I am a surgeon in California, and today I'm going to show you how to sew a surgical mask at home out of an old dress shirt or any old shirt that buttons up. Um, I realize that most of the sewing is already done by the way the shirt is made, so this is probably pretty easy to do. It only takes about 10 steps. So this is a regular surgical mask made out of paper. So you can see here that it comes over the bridge of your nose. There's about three pleats here and it comes under your, your chin and there's straps that you tie above your ears. So here's one I made a little while ago out of an old shirt. Um, you can see it's a similar, similar design. It's got three pleats on the side. It's got straps that you can either tie. I put a, a little sliding ball on there so it secures above, above your ears and then you can tie the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how to make this 10 easy steps out of an old shirt. So the supplies you need is one old dress shirt or button up shirt. It can be non-stretched thin cloth fabric. Um, let's be honest, we're all wearing our pajamas and sweatpants all day, so you don't really need your dress shirts right now. So um, upcycle them to homemade surgical masks and then in the future you can buy good ones. You need a ruler, you need something to mark the fabric with, a pencil or a pen. You need some good fabric scissors, a um, couple pins to hold the pleats together. Uh, you need a pipe cleaner to put on the bridge of your nose to help the mask stay put. And then you need either a sewing machine or some needle and thread if you know how to sew by hand. So the first thing I did here was I took the side of the shirt with the buttons. And I removed a few buttons and I marked a box here. Now this box is seven inches deep by 11 inches long, so it's more of a rectangle. Um, I got that measurement by actually measuring from the bridge of my nose down to the middle of my chin underneath. So for me, this is about six inches and you wanna add an inch to allow for the seams on the top and the bottom, so that's why seven inches. If you wanna measure your own face and adjust accordingly, you just measure from the bridge of your nose underneath your chin, say that's about six inches, add one, that's seven, so whatever your dimensions are. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these rectangles out on both sides, and, um, and then we'll go from there. You can see I've cut out the rectangles out of this shirt, like so, avoiding the pocket on this side. So you take your two seven by 11 rectangles, and you lay, you lay them so that the thick seams, which are already where the buttons and the buttonholes were, are opposite of each other. And the edge of the fabric is about halfway through the edge where the uh, buttons holes or the buttons were because that's already where it's been stitched down. And you just fold that over halfway on itself. So that leaves you with what looks like a bias strip, which is a, a sewing technique that um, people use when they're sewing, but this is already done for you since it's part of the way the shirt is constructed. I'm going to go ahead and just pin that there to hold it in place. And the same thing on the other side, you just fold it, fold it over halfway on itself, pin it down and hold it in place. And then we're just going to stitch down these seams. Just gonna stitch down these seams here to attach those two sides together. I would leave about a quarter inch seam allowance on the side. Now the other thing that I think you should probably go ahead and, and do at this point is you don't wanna stitch all the way to the end of this seam and I'll show you why. Um, you just wanna, you wanna leave about an inch at either end that's not stitched down. So why don't you go ahead and just take your ruler and mark one inch in you don't want to stitch past that. You, you want to leave this open because later on we're going to stick our tying straps into this and then stitch them down separately. So it's easier to stick the straps and you do that on the, on the top and the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and stitch one side. So here I have sewn down the edges on both sides. So we folded over the hems where the buttons were and where the buttons holes were and stitch them together and you can see it's you know, a two-ply mask now. And we stitched uh, up to about an inch from the ends and I stopped 
So this is still open and that's to stick the ties in later. And now what I do is, uh, first of all, you gotta pick which side is gonna be the nose. And I think the side that had the buttons, not the button hold, is a little less stiff and works better for the nose piece. So take your pipe cleaner and you just slide it into that space in, uh, between where the, the hemline was. And just slide it down into that space to where, to where your nose is gonna be. If you want to stick this in there before you, you, before you sew it down, that's also something you can do. So, so then it, it'll form around your nose, so you stick that in the middle there. Okay, and then go ahead and take your scissors, and you're just gonna cut one inch in, because you already marked your inch mark, because that's where you stopped your hemline. So you, you're gonna cut the mask away from the, the edges there for one inch on all four sides, all four corners. Okay, and then once you've cut that in an inch, you fold each side on the inside all the way down to the bottom of where you cut the hemline. So you just fold it in like this so it looks nice on the outside. And this is where you're gonna fold three separate pleats. Um, I think three works better for surgical masks. And, the, and this is where you wanna use these three pins that you have. So. The way I've learned how to do it here is you just grab about an inch apart from each other and fold over so the pleat's about half of an inch and then you pin it and you want to pin it far enough on the inside that you're not stitching across it because you need to hold it while you're stitching your hemline over here. So you do this three times down the length of the mask. You don't want to overlap the fabric too much because then it's just way too thick for the sewing machine. It's already getting pretty thick here with the, the pleats. They're getting about eight layers of fabric folded over on itself at this point. So I think it's a good idea probably not to use a flannel shirt or something too thick. Thin cotton dress shirts are probably the best. Okay, so you can see we have a couple of pleats here on the side. And I'm just going to stitch this down on both sides like that. Okay, so I've finished doing the pleats. You can see that there's three separate pleats there that I've stitched in on each side. The sewing machine didn't really have any problem getting through that folds of fabric. It does start getting a little thick. Um, I went ahead and kind of crossed up to my other hemline a little bit here. Um, and then this is still open and I'm gonna show you why these ends are open right now. But uh, again, the nose piece with the, with the bit of the um, pipe cleaner is in the side that had the buttons, not the button holes. You can see it's starting to look already a little bit like a regular old surgical mask. So now in order to get the ties, what I realized is a regular dress shirt already has a nice hemmed line. So there's a nice hemmed line around the entire bottom of the shirt, and there's a nice hemmed line underneath the arms that run to the bottom of the shirt. So these hemmed lines will work really well for ties. They're, they'll hold together because they're already stitched together by the, the shirt company. So um, I'm going to stop wearing this. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the hemlines on this side, the second one also on this side, and the entire bottom hemline and show you how to stitch those onto the mask. Okay, so I removed the entire lower hemline from the shirt, which gives you this nice long piece of string. It's not going to tear because it's already been stitched uh, together with the shirt. And then I, I took the hemlines from underneath the arms and they give you two shorter pieces. Um, you don't really need that much of a, of a length. So I take the really long piece and fold it in half. I'll just go ahead and cut it in half here. Uh, yeah, probably better just cut it in half. And then um, remember which is the top of it. Again, it's the uh, side without the button holes and it's a side that has the pipe cleaner in it. And for the longer pieces, um, which is the bottom hemline, you can see it's longer than the uh, side piece. Go ahead and use the longer piece on the top. It's gotta go all the way around behind your, your head and it's easier to tie if it's long. So what you do is you just take this open part of the hem that we left open from before. You just tuck it in there 
And then you're just going to stitch across this so that it closes this and stitches that little bit of the tie inside of there. Um, I think just a regular stitch will work as long as you make sure that the fabric actually crosses into it. And you're going to do that on all four sides. Okay, so I took the four strips and I stitched them here at each of the hemlines. I fixed the hemlines a little bit with a few extra stitches just to make it look a little bit cleaner. But you can see that the, the strips are definitely stuck in there and are not going to come out. So um, a lot of people talk about making these masks with elastic that go behind the ears. For one, um, I've been a surgeon for 15 years. I have to wear masks for many hours a day. It hurts my ears to have a lot of elastic pulling back there and I wear glasses and it pulls my ears forward and my glasses tend to fall off. So I like the straps. Um, the way surgeons put on masks is we put the bridge on first, we press down the strip there, which in this case is that pipe cleaner, and you take the top straps and you tie them behind your head. Now if you're not used to tying behind your head like we are, um, the other thing I recommend that you do is get these spring-loaded cinch balls that you know are used on backpacks and things like that, and you can basically stick the the straps of the mask through the ball and when you put it on the back of your head you can just cinch it down using that. You can use it on the top and the bottom. That's a really easy way of putting the mask on, securing it, and being able to micro adjust the tightness. So anyway, that's it. 10 easy steps to making your very own surgical mask at home out of fabric. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank my filming crew. As you know, we're all working from home these days, so I had my kids help me out. And there's always certain challenges to working at home, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, you guys stay safe. Ooh. Thanks a lot.